Well, gosh, it's good to see y'all. And, I agree. <laughs> um, gosh, there's a lot to catch up on. And <laughs> I have no particular agenda, but just to maybe go around and, you know, fill in the basic logistics in like a few sentences, like, like over the last few years, are you still in the same physical place and big major movements? And Ke- Kevin had already gotten started. So yeah. maybe Kevin, you finish up from yeah. yeah, so we're May still in Austin, something. Yeah. Um, paying far too little for rent through what I can only assume is a bureaucratic oversight, but I have a 12 month lease that I signed in July. So what are they gonna do? <laughs> Wait, so I missed that part since I was three minutes oh, yeah, late. No, so, uh, 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 two years ago now, year and a half, I don't know, two leases ago, uh, we got our renewal paperwork for the apartment that we've been living in since we moved to Austin. And they dropped the price of rent by like $300. We don't know why. Interesting. Um, we signed the renewal paperwork and just sort of went like, huh, that's weird. And then... <laughs> Like, after we'd signed, we said to our apartment manager, like, that seems weird. And she goes, yeah, that is weird. I'm going to look into after that. <laughs> I yeah, love after how we signed. You, you were really curious. You wanted to mention it and talk about how weird it is. Yeah. But after you waited we signed. until later. And then, yes. um, you know, a month or so went by and they sent us the lease that had, you know, at, at the time it was like six forty nine. It's gone up another 25, 30 bucks since then. And you cannot find an apartment anywhere in Austin for that. Um, like, I don't Wait, know how much affordable housing stuff is that myself, I, I, I'd say that it's worth more to them for you to be as re- reliable and uh, yeah. responsible <laughs> as you are than to get like $300 a month more from somebody else who they don't have any idea about. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, we, we stuck it out and then they continued that practice and bumped us another, you know, industry standard, I think 30, 50 bucks, something like that. Oh the mm-hmm. next year and so at the time we were considering like do we want to move because i had i had gotten laid off in july june of 2019 oh and which is when that first like lease drop came and we were from like indeed. this is perfect this is laid off from from your gig at indeed yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. um it oh. the department i was in and at indeed the entire three years i was there it spent slowly collapsing what department were you in? Uh, it was an organization called Indeed Prime, or at least mm-hmm. it was when I left. Uh, they renamed to Scene by Indeed um, mm. and then shut down because it was an idea that didn't Wait, work. Wait, so are you saying a rebranding occurs right before the ominous decline? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is usually the case. Yes. My well, boss to be fair, rebranding today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ominous decline is one of those things that is going to continue or or was was happening literally when I started. In my exit interview, I talked about how this department, this project had been failing since I was hired. Like I got hired at its peak. Oh, so, Um, so, and it lasted about another year. But do you have, do I hope you don't blame yourself. I really don't. No, I blame the terrible management. (laughs) I blame the fact that the core idea was bad. Um, (laughs) And so that was that was very helpful. So you got uh, laid off June of last year, you said. Yeah. And then what's spent happened? about six months unemployed, um, applying for jobs on unemployment mm-hmm. for a while, and then I'm now um, in the mortgage industry. I uh, I'm oh. a corporate trainer for DHI Mortgage, the oh. mortgage lending arm of Dr. Horton, America's largest nice. home builder. Oh, I've seen their signs. Yes, they have lots uh, of signs. They have lots of signs, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I do uh, corporate training. So very much what, what I like to do, um, very much in what I've done. I spent the first eight months actually doing loan processing. So like wow. the actual paperwork for people to get their mortgages. Um, and then I've now finally been able to move into my role as a, a mortgage trainer. So I do. So who are you training? Uh, internal uh, people, so mortgage processors, new people that start at the company, loan originators. Um, okay. Underwriting has their own training team for various reasons. Side. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm distracted by your magical disappearing hand. Oh yeah, it's the, the 3D. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I do, I do that, yeah. although um, 
<clears throat> on the creative side, I still focus a lot on writing. I have a weekly newsletter I put out every week for the past three or four years now. I think I started in October, so it might be four years now. I'd have to go check. Um, usually, you know, a thousand to two thousand words on various pop culture topics. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and I do, I say I do, I've made three uh, video essays on YouTube about various movies as nice. a thing that I always wanted to do and now do. I love that you're doing that. Like, you yeah. are clearly still the Kevin that I knew back in college. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I haven't changed that much. I'm still me. <laughs> so, uh, it feels good. Matt, do you want to go next? Sure. So, um, let's see. We, I didn't really, I guess I knew you were in Austin, Kevin, but I had kind of, it was out of sight, out of mind. It's a so, big town. Yeah. Apologies that I have not reached out to you, but um, we, uh, we technically lived, live in Round Rock. So our house is up in Round Rock. And um, I've been to your house. actually made a cameo at our house. He did. <laughs> he's not been into our house, but he's been to our house. Yep. Uh, so um, we bought the house there um, a couple years after moving back to Austin from Dallas. Um, so we moved to Austin when I got the job at Visa. We were engaged at the time, and uh, we got married, uh, lived in an apartment for a couple of years, paid way too much in rent, <laughs> and, um, and by too much, I mean, like, interest aside, our mortgage principal payment is uh, less than our rent was for a two-bedroom apartment, so, um, so definitely paid too much in rent. Um, the house was awesome. We were loving it. Um, I was committing to work every day. My, the visa office uh, was near Charles Schwab, if you don't know where that is, um, mm -hmm. but was on 183 in Oak Knoll. Yeah. Who's uh, Steven? Yeah. Oh, Steven. He's, he's, and I'm so. Um, on a stereo internet, man. It's going <laughs> to. Just, just roll with it. Yeah. It's going to be what it is. Yeah. yeah. So then, uh, let's see. We. You know, we were enjoying life, having a great time. I was commuting every day, and then COVID hit. And so I worked, we did a business continuity test. It was either in, I think it was in the beginning of March. And then uh, at the end of the business continuity test, where they were having everybody work from home just to see what would happen, they were like, just kidding. No one's coming back. And so <laughs> we, uh, we've all been working from home since then. And so in May, Courtney and I looked at each other and we were like, well, we always try to get in at least one or two international trips a year. That was kind of our thing. We like to travel. Uh -huh. And so we were like, we'd always been waiting to do domestic travel until we had kids because we were like, obviously that'll be a little cheaper. And so we looked at each other and said, well, we're not traveling internationally. We still want to travel. We're just sitting at home staring at each other on our laptops all day. So <laughs> let's buy an RV. So we went out and we bought a travel trailer, 32 feet long, hooked it up to the truck, and now we're traveling the country. So, You're in the trailer right now. That's yeah. I'm in. I'm in a trailer right now. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Holy shit! And where is the trailer? So the trailer is currently on a hill. <laughs> so uh, we're in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> Okay, wow. uh, up in the Ozarks. So in the Ozarks. Um, we just we just had some chili outside by the campfire. Froze our butts off. The feels like <laughs> temp this week was twenty one. <laughs> so uh, it's been a little chilly. Um, and yeah, so we're just we're working here, um, traveling while we work, and it's it's been pretty awesome. Wow. Well, oh, that is that's cool. Um, to segue in my uh signature like terrible segue style uh, <laughs> speaking of of cold weather in remote places uh i am in northern vermont uh, okay where it is actually i think warmer than than, <laughs> than arkansas uh, like 41 right now or so but there's snow on the ground um oh nice and it's supposed to maybe keep well, no, it's supposed to warm up, actually. We're going to be hit a balmy uh, 46 degrees on Sunday, uh, possibly. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm in the, I guess it's called the Northeast Kingdom. 
uh, I, I'm, I'm literally within sight of Canada. Um, mm -hmm. back, I can see from our, we have this, this front porch that we affectionately dubbed the front porch at the end of the universe where <laughs> I can see like Canada. Uh, yeah. awesome. Wait, so is there a border there or is it open? Like what is, what's happening uh, there? I'm not, I haven't tried to cross the border yet. Uh, it hasn't gotten that bad. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I haven't needed to. Yeah, you're needed just to. in a position where when the moment comes, it's, it just it's walking sneeze distance. and end up on the wrong side. <laughs> it's walking distance. I could just walk uh, yeah. but, um, or ski. I guess they Although do. It's, if it's Quebec, you got to practice your Quebecois, Quebecois French. Oh boy! Oh, I know. <laughs> other than uh, other than uh, uh, poutine, um, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> that'll get you in good ways. It will. So um, this and this is a Matt. This is a different monastery, by the way, from the one that I was going to go to. Were you in Virginia or something before? Yeah. So I'll, I'll sketch the last few years, like y'all have done. Um, uh, basically, the. The community house thing, Kevin, that I was in when, when we were uh, last speaking, um, mm -hmm. I basically destroyed that place. I just, my <laughs> shadow just absolutely wrecked that whole thing. Um, and it ended up, well, it, it ended up going uh, pretty well after I left. I, I think okay. I left like a, few, a few months after that, but the, after like maybe six months, the, mm -hmm. the whole original crew had turned over and it was just like a place again and um so i lived uh, at sebastian's place at the jewel of the east which i think you were at a couple of times uh, the mm -hmm. place on the east side um for a time we closed that down we had a we had a uh, a giveaway <laughs> party where we just opened our doors and said anybody like we put up signs on the, <laughs> on the telephone posts and said come in and just take anything uh oh that gosh. accumulated for 10 years it was great it was just the best uh, way better than trying to move all that shit somewhere. And then I just, that was the last time that I really had a place I was paying rent at. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, after that, began to monk and monk and monk more and more. Um, I spent a lot of time at the Goenka Vipassana Centers in uh, California. Uh, I visited a monastery or two in California for brief times. Um, made a couple of trips out to Canada. Um, and spent time with uh, the uh, the people that I met after the Eco Village travels, mm -hmm. and just kind of, there's lots of time on Amtrak, just <laughs> so much Amtrak meditation and uh, and basements of friends and houses and such for a while. But I, I I would be back in Austin for a good you know four or five months out of each year, and then traveling the rest of the time, and um, that was going okay but but last year i just i was like i just need to find a community and just like mm -hmm. root down and the circling community in austin um was not really they weren't looking to like start an actual monastery anytime soon sure and so i was like well okay let's just find a place and um the one in Virginia, Matt, was, uh, uh, I went there in February, um, right? I think after I gave you the, the bad philosophy t-shirt and uh, well, <laughs> yeah. something else, I was going I think through You gave me an Apple t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> which <laughs> I have to say, I don't know how you ever wore it. It is a size adult small, which <laughs> like if I put it on, I'm like a can of biscuits busting out. Of it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I guess I... I don't know, man. I, that was maybe that was the only way that I could keep it together. Uh, was to just have a really tight shirt. Uh, but, Squeeze all the anxieties in. Yeah, you know how that goes, man. You know how that goes. So, um, so no, I, I traded my I traded my apple my apple threads for for. Uh, well, I never actually got robes at that place, but you know, for <laughs> metaphorical for metaphorical robes and. Um, and and it was on the, the the drive into the monastery when I first heard the word coronavirus, because mm -hmm. one of the other lay people at this very small uh, monastery on a large piece of land in Virginia, it was like 10 people living on 200 acres or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the lay people there was going to go to, to, um, to Burma and then, you know, the coronavirus and 
so we we just got to watch over like the course of like february and march this thing just kind of creep slowly and slowly more toward america and, and um eventually you know doing what seemed like crazy things like lysol's spraying lysol on broccoli and uh <laughs> and wiping everything down with alcohol and and wearing these surgical masks around people but we most of the time didn't really have much contact with with covid world in those early months because we would just we would have Thai people kind of deliver things to us and mm -hmm. most of the time though we were just we were just doing the thing so i i really got to and i didn't even have my cell phone on me for for a while i would call my mom every couple of weeks and uh so that was that was its own like kind of like strange almost a psychedelic experience just being mm -hmm. in a way like almost in a completely different world or on a different planet um living in a cabin in the woods as the world was just changing completely yeah is that a yeah. lot different than a trailer in the woods um not too much there it's about the same <laughs> same side of the trailer but you know um no no risk of it uh you know rolling anywhere in the middle of the night or anything <laughs> Um, I'll tell you, I, we were in East Tennessee yeah. and they were like, no, there's no COVID out here. There's no COVID here. <laughs> now, granted, that was several months ago, but they were like, nah, right. there's nobody here with it. Right. It took a while to reach the rural places. Mm -hmm. It really did. Um, but um, but after it run, I was planning on staying there until until May, but then it was like, well, it's not a good time to go back to Austin right now. And um, I, at some point I just, it, it started looking a little bit better toward like early June and, and I had applied to actually uh, go to this, this place where I'm now, um, the Monastic Academy for the Preservation of Life on Earth, uh, Maple, uh, which is in, in Vermont and is, is more of this like hybrid monastery kind of a thing. It's, a, it's like we do a lot of circling and uh, uh, like bioemotive trauma release and also like a lot of seated meditation kind of Zen style. So it's, it's more, it's more in the world than, than the place in Virginia for sure. But it's less of like, you know, the actual monks and robes with bowls and, and the mm -hmm. rituals and everything. So um, I had applied to go there, but I actually, I, I wasn't able to start here until August. So I had two months back in Austin in the midst of like COVID world. Uh, with living with Sebastian and his roommate in, in uh, around Circle C, um, and uh, that was just a trip, man, to go from the monastery into into that. Um, so I, I'm here now, and we we're about 20 people with guests coming and going, and and there's really no there's no COVID protocol. Vermont's like really doing really well, uh, and we we don't really have to quarantine anyone, but we might have to do that soon. I don't know. They just stopped having retreats, um, mm -hmm. and despite like a quarter of nonprofits failing this year, uh, we've had a few major donors just really step up and, and keep the place afloat. And so it's uh, uh, it's 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 okay. We seem to be okay for, for the who are, who um, are major donors to organizations like that? Like, are they from certain sectors of industries or like you know individuals? I, I, I don't know a lot of the history of the of the top ones. We have maybe ten whales or whatever they're called, you know, that, that make up like eighty or ninety percent of our of our funding, and um, they're just folks who I guess um, I think one he did like organizational consulting for a long time, and um, someone else is a hedge fund former hedge fund manager or something, and. Another she rich people with too much rich money. people yeah. in the northeast who <laughs> like meditation, you know, like that kind yeah. of thing. Nice. Um, and so I'm. It's I'm, not a Kevin Rose or Tim Ferriss, is it? I don't. I don't know. But the actually, uh, Meng, I, uh, I forget his name. The guy, uh, Search Inside Yourself uh, guy from Google, you know, who started the whole like meditation program at Google. Mm -hmm. um, He's, he's like on our board of advisors. And, uh, but um, all that to say, I just recently got like invited to stay as a resident. So I'm, I'm kind of their equivalent of a monk uh, like mm -hmm. a, or a novice or something. And uh, I was put in charge of the buildings and grounds here. So I'm like in charge of the apprentices who have their like two month <laughs> cohorts rotating. I was just an apprentice and, 
that's like the you know bathroom cleaning snow shoveling mm -hmm. cooking meals all that yeah. so i'm now like managing that like team of five or six people uh <laughs> and, and i'm kind of like the Jordy laforge on the starship <laughs> now cool. why they put a texan in charge of of a of a mountain monastery in vermont going into the winter i have no idea but uh <laughs> It's it's actually been really fun so far, and I, I really like my team and, uh, and the, the place here. So, so that's my story. A lot of that's monkeys. Cool. So you, if they, if you have any problems, just make sure you tell them. Well, just wrap it in barbed wire and cover it in whiskey. It'll be fine. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> there are moose here, and I've seen bears. There's like nice. actual like megafauna. That's yeah. pretty cool. So. Um, that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, moose are bigger than you ever think they are. Yeah, they're massive creatures. <laughs> they're just huge. Like you expect it's, bears to be big, but you see a moose and you just you don't expect it to be that big. And but wide, I don't expect it to know? eat me. Like, yeah, <laughs> doesn't have to eat you. It'll just trample you. Oh yeah, they will <laughs> knock down trees. You know, they just don't care. They're just barrels. <laughs> so. Thankfully, I haven't, I haven't had to had to run from or or uh, uh, avoid a moose yet. So, um, glad to hear it. <laughs> but we got our first snowfall today. It's it's actually there's snow on the ground. I said it's a light dusting. You know, it's like an inch or two. Yeah, it's like that's okay. El Paso got snow last week. So, <laughs> oh my. So I I would love to 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 open it up. Like you know, Matt, y'all went y'all's COVID experiences. You just you like went on the road uh kevin uh I, amy i assume y'all haven't like uh done any trips or have y'all gotten no, out or is it we have been... we have locked down basically um, yeah yeah it was i mean it was march 15th um when the heights of march yeah. i so it that, the 15th was a monday and the sunday before i had a D, &D game we get together every week oh. and we play on sunday nights and I had emailed everyone and was like, look, I'm not comfortable right now. Like there's just so much stuff out there. We don't know what to do. So many places are locking down. So I'm just going to skip this week. Um, and like an hour later, my manager called me and is like, hey, we're doing a survey of people to talk to see who should be staying at home. Um, if any, and you know, it's sort of preliminary. We're not sure what we're going to do. Um, I had taken my laptop home with me because I kind of expected this. Yep. Um, they were like, okay, uh, are you immunocompromised? No. Do you live with anybody who's immunocompromised? Yes. And some of the other questions were like, do you have kids who are going to be out of school? Um, and so immediately I was the first in line of like, cool, you get to stay home and work from home. And it was less than a week later that everybody else was sent home. Like it yeah. was just, um, we work from home now. Um, there was a lot of upheaval in the mortgage industry because there's a lot of in-person <laughs> stuff that has to be done. Um, and so a lot of figuring out like, okay, what do we have to do in person? How do we do that safely? And what is everything else that we can do? But yeah, I haven't been back to the office. I went once to go pick up a couple monitors so I have an actual workspace. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but other than that, and, and my team specifically, like the whole company is still working remote except for those who can't. Um, but my team specifically was basically told, yeah, y'all are so effective. You're basically going to work remote forever now. <laughs> yep. Uh, which I was fine with. Um, so yeah, so we've been locked down. We, we haven't gone anywhere. Um, we do curbside pickup for groceries. Uh, we go out every weekend is our exciting adventures we go to uh you know a local restaurant to do curbside pickup of a takeout meal <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's our exciting moments uh we yeah, have the the current mind game we're playing is we're pretending we're on a long-haul spaceship with oh. uh, limited access to the outside world or yes. anything else <laughs> that's great. so that's the sort of mind game that we're in uh is, yeah, we're, bet, just, we're just I in this little it, pod floating through space <laughs> and i i bet matt it, it feels like like almost literally like that for y'all yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> well i was <laughs> laughing hearing that because yeah. it's rained for the past four and a half days like not, and i'm not talking about austin rain where it rains mm. for 15 minutes and it's done it's just just rained 24 <laughs> hours a day for four and a half days and so we were sitting in the trailer on day three going well, we're glad we got the bigger one. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can't get out. Um, yeah, it's upgrade. It is. Um, it's real good that Amy and I like each other a lot. <laughs> We've yeah, talked about that. Yeah. All. Having seen other people whose relationships have been struggling because this is an unprecedented time and we are yes. all under yes. unbelievable pressure. Record numbers of depression and, and yeah. uh, child abuse and uh, divorces, all, and all kinds. Of things. Totally yeah. understandable because yeah. we as a planet are suffering through a catastrophe right now yes. and, and mm -hmm. the u.s is at the top of the list of people suffering yes and so that that has been really helpful to have her as a support system um that's good we do we we also spent the six months before you know more than six months before i got when i was unemployed spending all day together in the apartment anyway <laughs> so we had a practicing yeah, we had a head start yeah. as far yeah. as this was considered. Oh boy! Um, and then we've we've done um, a lot of online socializing. So socializing, we do a weekly play reading every Friday night um, over Zoom. Okay. So we do I I collect and digitize plays and we pass out the scripts and we just we read a play every Friday night. That was like a, anywhere from an hour to a few hours experience. Yeah, um, yeah usually oh. you know I think the longest we hit is about three hours um, <sighs> but yeah and so we get together and we always like share at the beginning like hey what's one something good that happened to you this week we read the play and then at the end we do something we're looking forward to at the week to have some sort of structure around That's it. That's great. You said uh, Friday, yeah, we, Friday evenings? Yeah, Friday evenings. Yeah, we Friday. invite friends and families. I can send you the link if you want the, the info doc. I, I would, yes. I, I, I could maybe join uh, like a month we, from now or yeah, so. Yeah, we're super low stress or structure. So it's anybody yeah. who wants to show up can. Oh, yeah, we're doing uh, Agatha Christie's and then there were none this week, which is very okay. exciting. And then I do online games. So like I, my D&D yeah. &D group mm -hmm. moved online um pretty seamlessly actually I'm, I'm impressed with how easily considering the D, D is mostly just folks sitting around a table talking to each other like you just need a piece of software to roll a dice for you right it translates um, pretty easily yeah. it translates pretty darn easily, <laughs> which is great uh and then another one is i started an online campaign for a physical campaign board game called gloomhaven that is played over 80 to 100 sessions in real life like if you have to sit down and actually play it yeah um but there is an online version that someone basically converted the entire game into a digital tabletop environment oh and so i'm playing with that with some friends from san antonio that i usually only get to see once a year that now i get to hang out with every weekend cool so yeah i'm socializing more than i was before thanks to covid Pause. I have a request. I don't mm -hmm. have a Zoom Pro account, uh, mm -hmm. and I imagine you might, oh, Kevin. Yeah. Could could uh, I stop this and then you you email yeah, let me us see a if link I can make that happen. Yeah, new session. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here then. And so, send the link out. I'm gonna go get my laptop charger. Great. Uh, it'll be in the email thread. I yeah. I imagine. Okay. See y'all soon. Start, gentlemen, start your video. Uh, okay. And that is one of the hardest things to get people to do when you're doing virtual trainings is getting oh my people goodness. to turn on their videos. Oh, Zoom literacy is now just, it's like amazing. It's like this thing that everybody kind of needs now or something. Yeah. Well, and, and it's less the, the knowledge of how to do it because they're all relatively smart people. They just don't want to do it yeah, because that, they want to do their jobs and pretend they're in the training. Right, right, um, right. I literally had one this morning or this afternoon that started in the morning. Um, we got done about two o'clock, myself and the other trainer. We always stay on in case there's extra questions as everybody else is sort of logging off. Uh -huh. There was definitely somebody who at the end had their mic and video off and was just sitting there like, and we realized that it was probably the entire training. They had logged in at the beginning at like 10 a.m. and just turned oh. off their mic and video and then <laughs> didn't realize the training was over. So oh we, had to, we had to, to yeah. we, we gave them ample opportunity. We're like, hey, if you're on, if you're listening, this is your chance to acknowledge us before we have to rat you out <laughs> for not participating. Yeah. <laughs> oh my and goodness. Nothing. Welcome to 2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found that the people on my team just don't want to turn their cameras on ever. Oh. Um, like, we'll do a team meeting and 
um, my boss and I turn on our cameras and then there's 18 people with no, no cameras on. <laughs> we we and, don't give our team a choice. We're like, no, you're turning on your camera. Like, yeah. just, well, so we, we, as ready we as give them a choice. Be. We just say, hey, like we're going to do a team meeting. We only do these once a month, like without the entire team. <laughs> it's and not like, too hey, much to ask. And my yeah. boss, he doesn't want to force anyone to do it, but he's like, no. hey, like, you know, take a shower, do your hair. Like he jokes about it. He's like, turn on your cameras. Let's have fun. And then no one does. And after no, we don't care if me, you shower or do your hair. There's a pandemic. <laughs> just turn on your camera. Pandemic, just please. We're, we're not. We're not holding you to a high standard. I'm in Although, a freaking trailer over here. There's no standard. I do say that we had to institute a rule, um, because of a thing that happened that you can't have naked people walking around behind you. Rules are always because of things. That, that would, yeah, that's... Oh, that was boy. one of those that someone's spouse just hopped out of the shower and was walking around looking for something. Oh, and it was like that, like, panic. I wasn't in that training, but I, I heard about it afterwards. And it was just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, hey, at least you let them know and made a rule instead of just, you yeah. know, not saying anything about it. Oh, that's, that's why virtual backgrounds are great, is because they save yeah. you from this problem. <laughs> so, like... This is this sucks, doesn't it? I mean, it just yeah, oh, absolutely. It's just terrible. It's just I, like I don't know how I feel about it because <laughs> on on one hand, I feel like there's a lot of things in the world that have needed to change for a long time, mm. and this is the catalyst that causes that change mm. because no one was willing mm. to be a pioneer in that space that needed change in a lot of industries, and so I think there's a lot of good that evolves out of it. Mm. Obviously, like people dying from a pandemic is a terrible thing and i've got a friend at home right now who's sick and his wife is taking care of the baby by herself and oh. so i mean whether even if you're not dying like it's just it disrupts and is so hard on people's lives mm -hmm. huge huge yeah um but you know on the flip side like we're able to do stuff that we never dreamed of doing until we were retired and a, a lot of people i know are enjoying the same freedoms where it's like the, the the world just a completely different place than it used to be and yeah um you know visa was talking about our two to six year transition plan because they said 95 percent of our workforce is working from home today globally mm -hmm. and our numbers are better in a lot of cases than what we had planned yeah and they, they in reality the only cases where our numbers are down are related to international cross-border spend which obviously that's down Right, of course. You, yeah. you can't, yeah, that's nobody's fault. There's nobody's Every, traveling. So yeah, anything that's, that's not a project happen, based yeah. number is up. And so they're going, like, uh, we're really not in a hurry to bring people back to the office. And if yeah. you think about it, like, people are were tired of commuting. They didn't work hard when they got to the office. They wanted to go right. take breaks and drink coffee. Yeah. Whereas at home, like, someone can wake up, start work whenever they want. Heck, if they work six hours, they're getting more work done at home during that six hours mm -hmm. than they ever would have gotten done at the office. Yep. Yeah. So. Well, it's a, it's a huge accessibility boom. You know, there are so many people who, for whom getting to an office is a difficult thing and yep, yeah. is a lot of times like an excluding factor for whether or not they get hired. Who True. Yeah. We've now proven, yeah, no, they can definitely work from home mm -hmm. because anybody can. My fear is that not enough companies are going to look at what like Visa's doing and say, oh, we can do this anyway forever. Well, don't think that Visa is super altruistic i mean they might be well, no. i I, th I, th I do think that this is a fantastic i don't think any company is super altruistic right just so. accidentally <laughs> this time the 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 uh, goals of the organization and 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 human just uh, happen to line up happen yeah. to line up yes it's yeah, yeah. lucky but yeah i mean now visa as far as capitalistic oh. companies go is relatively altruistic i'll give them that <laughs> however um what they're looking at every company that is it for profit is looking at risk more than anything, mm. especially once you reach critical mass. What you're interested in is defending what you have, mm. because if if something is risky to your business, that's more damaging than not working harder. Mm. And so, um, rather than getting everyone back into the office, regardless of whether or not home or the office is better, they're looking at if we bring people back in and someone gets sick, and you know the Wall Street Journal says this was because of visa boom well, our business is done overnight <laughs> so i mean that's why i say this it's not, it's, it's self preservation too so so yeah. on on the the uh, subject of self preservation i'm going to pull another terrible segue <laughs> just, just telegraphing it like kevin you you spoke to how you and amy have have uh, have gotten through the thing and and you know uh, it's 
sounds as if it's it's been a, a, a growthful challenge that's enhanced your relationship in a lot of ways too it sounds, it sounds like um, no, I would say that'd be fair. our relationship was really good and that has Already. allowed us to succeed in the pandemic Even, um, is, is one really where I look at it um, okay I, and, our relationship dynamic hasn't changed significantly because of this oh, okay. um, we we are just able to survive because we already have a lot of the coping strategies because we've dealt with trauma a yeah. lot in terms of Amy's medical issues yeah. and by losing a job. Like yeah. we have survived so much trauma already that we were just like, oh, okay, some more trauma. Let's deal with that. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit flippant, but it also, it also, you know we realized, it. Before. right. Yeah. We realized that we were more prepared emotionally and psychologically than a lot of people were so for what they had to deal with. <laughs> people just went crazy. Just yeah. so many people just lost it. The, yeah. Especially understandably. That month. Yeah. yeah, understandably. Just, it was really... It was terrifying. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's still okay, kind of terrifying. That's really weird to me because, uh, you know, as I was talking to people on my team, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Let's check in. Like, you know, do you have everything you need? How are you, like, how are you, mm -hmm. you know like mentally you know do you feel okay mm -hmm. and i was finding out that um like one guy on my team he was like well my wife and i rearrange the furniture in our in our living room every saturday just so we have something to do and he was like we're repeating ourselves at this point but it's yeah. just change mm -hmm. and i was like and i talked to another guy and i was like well why aren't you why are you not getting out and doing anything and he was like no we're we're locked down and i'm like bro Lockdown doesn't mean you have to be inside the four walls of the right. house. And <laughs> I think a lot outside, of people, yes. I think high level people, high functioning, highly intelligent people are missing that concept yeah. that lockdown doesn't mean you have to stay inside. Yeah. And, and I think that is very damaging to people's minds. Yeah. I, I, I had kind of like a, like a, like a, um, an accelerated like COVID experience like uh, after everybody else. So, you know, I like got back in June and then that was my like first, it, like walking into the HEB and just seeing like the shelves just in disarray, you know, and just like <laughs> massive chunks of products just missing and everybody just kind of rushing around like they're mm -hmm. practicing for the apocalypse or something, you know, like it, it was it was really jarring. And I, and I, I did have like a week or two there where I just, at, at first it was just like surreal and, and kind of fun in a really strange performative way or something. Mm -hmm. But then, then it, that, that thing happened you're talking about Matt, where I was just like, no, I just, I kind of, I'm wearing my mask even when I'm like going for a walk on, on my own and like, I kind of right. just don't want to go outside at all. It's also the summer in, in Texas. So it's <laughs> comfortable. And, and I would just spend whole days just, you know, I mean, meditating and then being online and talking when the, the dynamics of the house became the most interesting thing. We, we kind of like we got into some drama and then like started creating our own rituals and you know, board game nights and cooking. And, you know, I had the baking phase. I totally went through the sure. baking phase. Everyone's right? got like, to. Everyone did that. You know, I didn't have a sourdough starter, but, you know, I made use of oh, so I made a sourdough, sourdough starter years ago. You did. You see, scratch. you were already. I was ahead of the game. You're just way Yeah, ahead. I was like, I asshole ahead now. I'm just going to use yeast. You see, we've got a neighborhood bakery that does only sourdough and they have COVID free curbside. So <laughs> that's what I believe. That's much better. <laughs> But, but then eventually, it was like maybe a month or two in, I, I started, someone suggested the notion of a, of a COVID walk where you, you know, you get on a call and then both people go walking in their own neighborhood, wherever they are. And so you're kind of going on a walk with the person. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Right. But, yeah. but you're, you're not like physically together. But I would also be inviting some friends to just go on physical walks, you know, and, and people so it kind of, it was, it was like, strange and like uh disproportionately enjoyable mm -hmm. you know when we when we'd get together and and you know it was like what if this were the last conversation that i have with this person you know and then we really just got to the meaningful stuff much quicker uh and and it's it kind of has hasn't really diminished even as as this thing has has gone through its waves you know that folks have kind of hit a stride with it from what i can tell and and we've just figured out how to how to make the best of it um does that, that ring true for y'all? Does it kind of seem that way with your friends and relatives too, or more or less? I don't know. I've got, I've yeah. got so many conflicting feelings. Say about something. Oh, go ahead. Did you, did you lose your mat? 
I think we might have lost Matt. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, Am I oh. still here? No, you're still here. There you okay. Are. Maybe. Kevin Maybe. has conflicting okay. feelings. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I am definitely one of the people who is taking it or feels like it's take, I was taking it much more seriously than a lot of the other people in my life. Oh. And cause I haven't, you know, interacted with other humans. Like the closest thing I get is when my neighbor would go walk her dogs and I get to pet her dogs from, you know, six feet away. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mind doing that. I don't like it, but I've also got, you know, family members who have gone traveling and who have done a lot of the things that are riskier that mm -hmm. I don't feel safe or comfortable doing. And so mm -hmm. I get grumpy for lack of a better term when they do that and I can't make their decisions and I can't make, I can't decide for them what's the safest or best option. Cause there is a mental health aspect of it Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And I have to yeah. keep that in mind, but are you grumpy because you feel left out from the activity or are you grumpy because you feel like they're endangering the world that you wish you could live or that you're both. trying to avoid? Like, oh, kind of which direction is that? It's, it's absolutely both. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, this is such an event that is made or broken, not by individual actions, but by collective actions, mm -hmm. which is true of everything. But this puts it in Ridiculous. very stark contrast mm -hmm. um whereby you know you say you feel fine you have have not been tested who knows and you go and you're interacting with other people who who may be sick but also we know there is a non-insignificant number of asymptomatic spreaders sure. mm -hmm. yeah. and so every risk you take is not just putting yourself at risk but is putting everybody else that you interact with at risk mm. and that is such a selfish thing that it it drives me a little batty um and you can be as safe as you can and people the people i know who are doing these things are being as safe as they are comfortable being mm -hmm. um but yeah i've barely left my apartment since march yeah, <laughs> um yeah. i've you know this this little same square area, and i'm okay with that but you know folks go into the beach or folks you know go into the mountains even if they're doing it in a safe environment they still got to drive you got to stop you got to get gas you got to interact with people you got to get food you fly if you're flying like you're in a ball full of recycled air like those are the things oh, that, that i think about the whole time covid yeah. airports are, yeah. are just nuts it's and just that, i've flown four times now yeah. since since this and it's just it's weird it's yeah. so weird yeah <laughs> and and because there is this it feels like that every time I make a statement about like, I'm not doing these things or I'm avoiding these things. Not, I mean, it feels like if I'm doing that, I'm making a statement because it has mm -hmm. become political to a weird degree. Mm -hmm. Like public uh, yeah. health and safety has become political to a degree that I'm really uncomfortable with. Right. It's like, um, can, can we just care about all everybody? Yeah. Can we just do and that, so like, all of that just just <laughs> grinds my gears, which yeah. is why I generally avoid thinking about it most of the time. I live in my little spaceship. That's I go out once a week for you know twice for for takeout, and I gotta and I I've got to do that uh, because worrying about everybody else is going to only hurt my own mental health, so and is going to because it is about well, collective action rather than individuals. I like getting mad at my folks for flying to North Carolina. They didn't fly to North Carolina. Driving to North Carolina, like doesn't change their behavior and doesn't institute any sort of systemic change. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck in both. So it's one of those. See, that, I, yeah. I think I, I feel, I understand what you're saying because uh, towards the beginning of COVID uh, right after it had kind of become a thing, my dad um, was scheduled to have his prostate removed because he had been diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And so, um, you know, we, so we had this situation where we're like, well, do we postpone the surgery? No, because especially prostate cancer, you want to get it out. If you get it out Asked. early, you're yeah. fine. And if you yeah. don't, then you're not fine. Yeah. And so we're like, well, we can't delay it. So, you know, I ended up in the midst of all this. Um, my dad moved in with, um, with, me and my wife and, and lived with us for like 
a month before the surgery because he didn't want to be exposed to anything and sure. we were isolating more at that point than oh. his wife and you know and uh, at the time my sister was living with them and so um he came to just kind of isolate with us and then um going to the hospital was weird checking in at the hospital was weird because i mean it was like you get there there's security there's police mm -hmm. standing outside the hospital there's the this the temperature checks and i'm you know, was that weird for you on the first time where it was, it was basically like someone points a, puts a gun to your forehead? And it's like, right, right. It's yeah. like, I'm like, oh, are we doing that? Oh, never mind. Just yeah, just like, whoa. <laughs> so, like, that was weird. And also, you know, if I'm going to, you know, go into a Walmart because I have mm -hmm. to go get something, mm -hmm. I'll wear a mask, but I'm not going to wear gloves. I'm just going to wear, I'm going to use hand sanitizer before, you know, before I touch anything that's my personal items, before oh. I touch the car handle, like, like I am understand as long as my hands don't touch anything wearing gloves doesn't doesn't change anything you know right yeah and so the difference with going to the hospital was it's like you take even more precautions so mm -hmm. because they yeah. they had a covid wing at this hospital yeah yeah so yeah, makes sense. i'm like you know wearing gloves wearing the mask i've got um hats and clothes that i'm changing in and out and mm -hmm. sanitizing in the parking lot before the vehicle again at home washing things sanitizing bottoms of shoes i mean it was you joke about spraying Lysol and broccoli. I mean, we were at that level with yeah. my dad with us. And then when he came back from the hospital and even getting him stuff to the hospital, it was like there was a transition protocol to get something left on the curb. It was like curbside check-in to the hospital to get him mm -hmm. stuff, you know? Wow. And so all of that was super weird. And so, but where I landed on it though, and this is what I find interesting is like, my opinion was we're going to not go anywhere, not do anything because I've got someone who, is obviously extremely high risk having been a cancer surgery patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we just didn't, didn't do anything. Um, and if we did grocery delivery, uh, we sprayed, sanitized, wiped everything. Yeah. And so. Um, you really care about your dad. I mean, yeah, that's, that's huge. You true. Know? Yeah. And so, but then on the flip side, you know, now that my dad's help, you know, he's recovered, he's back at his house with my mom and, he's good there now at this point we had a decision to make you know because wife's in, her job is literally to sell covid testing supplies she's a scientist she's in this world every single day and so we had a conversation that was like as a society yeah you've got to keep the people that like my dad or you know like amy that need to be protected you've got to keep them safe but the rest of the world to some extent's got to get back to doing things normally i mean sure like put on a mask but like if no one ever the only way through this thing is either with the vaccine or with herd immunity mm -hmm. so we kind of looked at each other and said well we're going to travel we're going to take on more risk than being at home i mean i mm -hmm. mean how much risk is there in stopping at a gas station you know and we still do curbside order pickups and stuff i mean it's like mm -hmm. you know we're we're not really going in any places mm -hmm. and so um you know i guess so that was where we landed which was like let's just um let's be careful but you know let's keep living life let's stay locked down but like mobily locked down <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that's i mean yeah well and I'm, wow. i always, yeah. i look at it from the perspective of again you know collective action mm -hmm. the idea that and i know this is true because we've seen it in other places mm -hmm. that if you institute like an actual real widespread quarantine you can kick the virus out basically you can you can let it burn out of a population correct yeah mm -hmm. um that's just you know the epidemiologists saying that and then pointing to the places where they did that yep, yep. um and so the the fact that we have failed to do that as a society <laughs> drives me oh. up a wall because i'm like we we have the solutions we know how to do it and for a lot of reasons we didn't yeah and have not yet and yeah. we had record numbers this week like because we're continuing yeah. to think individually rather than collectively which is kind of how i feel about all problems in the universe right now is, is we're thinking about them individually rather than i love how you have it like yeah. the universe behind yeah, you. yeah it's appropriate <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, all that's, of it, all of it. <laughs> Kevin, you're, you're, you're right on the money there. That, um, and this, this is really what, what drew me to this particular uh, monastery right now, this, the monastic academy, because that, 
that basically is the theory of change for the, mm-hmm. the like for the preservation of life on earth is is really is, is thinking individualistically as a as a point of leverage for this problem is really mm-hmm. we we have a tremendous amount of delusion in this society we have a tremendous amount of, of greed we have a tremendous amount of of fear we have a tremendous amount of cultural programming that tells us how we should be and operate in relation to to all of these issues mm-hmm. and a lot of trauma of uh, just a ton of developmental and of many just all the kinds of trauma sure and so the the interpretation i see as going by is basically a monastery is like a place to really do the work on all of those uh, the delusion that fear that greed that trauma where you can actually do the work which is in your own heart and mind mm-hmm. And, and to, really, to really create an environment where people can actually do that rather than being you know, distracted and pulled in a bunch of different directions, you can just go in and focus on that. And in so doing, it, it kind of turns it back around to where the collective action becomes one of individual healing that, that, that enables the mm-hmm. new kinds of culture that can, can maturely face these problems without having any particular solution in mind you just create the kind of people who are more likely to like not be deluded when they look at the thing you know and not <laughs> not do <laughs> incredibly childish and shadowy stuff um and and monasteries have kind of always served that function in societies um into to uh, some extent or another we just haven't really had them as much in the west because of the protestant reformation and mm-hmm. some other things you know we we don't have it the same way that they do in Asia. So the the idea here is just we're just trying to do the thing that works, um, yeah. <laughs> and it, mostly it, it seems to be going all right here. Uh, we certainly have our our fair share of messiness, uh, <laughs> but there's um, there's less of a sense in this one as the the previous one I was at of just like we're we're just kind of checking out from the Mm -hmm. whole thing you know we're we're just like living off in the mountains and pretending that it's all going to go away it's like no certainly get the desire to go check out and live away sure (laughs) (laughs) and i mean to be fair we are like up on a mountain pretty far from like we're maybe half an hour from the first major town but vermont's a pretty distributed like state Mm -hmm. anyways but like we go into into burlington every sunday and i'm actually giving the talk in town this sunday we you know drive an hour and a half in there and we're actually like we have like guests come here we're still having retreats like there's going to be a circling retreat here and people are flying in and we're going to have some kind of a covid protocol around that we're not sure yet but like we're we're trying to kind of model that like the the virus is not the thing to be afraid of right the pandemic really is 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 and our response to it is is actually like much more of a symptom than than a cause and that really like the the root cause of of a lot of this is is the greed and delusion and fear that we have in our own hearts and so uh that's that really gets gets me going i, I mean i still think yeah. we have a pretty slim chance of 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 like avoiding extinction like i'm not, <laughs> I'm not you know like I, I mean i don't know i think there's I mean, a, there was a uh, <laughs> uh a great book i didn't actually read uh, yeah i've had on my stack for a long time called scatter adapt and remember Oh, um, those sounds like agreeable strategies. Well, that's that. It's it's literally like, what? How will humanity survive? That's okay. all oh, of that's the not what I thought it was. <laughs> I, I thought it was what we did at Black Friday a few years ago when the, they told I mean, us we were in a residential area. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the police were like, "You can't stay here." So we scattered, adapted it, and then we remembered where we were in line. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that's and and it's it's a surprisingly hopeful book about um the fact that we can technically we probably can survive just about anything that gets thrown at us it's not hopeful in that like it's going to help us avoid any of those things we have to do that ourselves yes but um it's it's an interesting scientific look at like how mass extinction events work and mm. how other species have survived them and what does that involve mm. um I would like to avoid a mass extinction, though. Like, yes. if we can do that, let's start there. Yeah. Right. Let's start with that, and Low then bar. just have a backup plan, <laughs> or in case so, we screw it up. Kind of just a a funny anecdote about 
you know, funny things happen during COVID, right? Please so, do. you know, I have the inevitable long-term baby face. And so ordering a beer somewhere is always a problem. <laughs> so I just know I can't like drive up to Walgreens and leave my wallet in the car. Even if I'm going to pay with Apple pay, I'm going to have mm-hmm. to have my ID to buy that mm-hmm. bottle of wine. <laughs> you know, that's just, I know that's my life. Just a fact. So um, I, I was, on my motorcycle, pull up to Walgreens. My wife had said, hey, can you get a bottle of wine on the way home? So I was like, sure, no problem. I'll throw it at the backpack and I'll be home. So I pull into Walgreens and I get off the bike and I'm about to take my helmet off and put my mask on. And I was like, I'm just gonna leave the helmet on. (laughs) So I left the helmet on, visor, like tinted (laughs) visor. You can't see it at all, leave it down. Walk into Walgreens. People looking at me kind of weird, but then like you can tell people register like, yeah, he's wearing a mask. <laughs> he's got a mask. He's so, got a mask. Okay. Yeah. So I, I walk back, grab two bottles of wine, set them down on the counter. The guy looks at me and says, can I see your ID? <laughs> so I hand it to him. And he looks at me, looks at the ID, and he goes, cool. And I'm like, you literally can't see <laughs> anything through this album. Yeah, but you have an ID, so it's probably somebody did, can yeah. buy this beer or this wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I proceeded to turn around and trip over a little kid I couldn't see. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> it goes both ways. Oh, yeah, there's, there's so, oh, there's, it's just a weird time, y'all. I, yeah. I mean, could, could y'all have imagined 10 years ago, you know, Texas Tech was, <laughs> you know, somewhere in the sub setting up a camera and just shooting the shit. But like 10 years later, we'd be facing a global pandemic. Well, so that's... It was 12 years ago, Stephen. 12, sorry. It's <laughs> time, <laughs> time, man. Time's fucking... Yeah, you know, that's so the it's problem super, with time. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned tech because... Um, I'm still on the computer science board and um, oh. Oh, I think we might have lost her. Yeah. Oh, my internet uh, connection is still what it says. No, okay. Need to get that now? you need to get that Starlink, man. You really need to get that Starlink. Get that <laughs> I need something. Get that get that SpaceX internet. Get that get song. <laughs> Of all the people who I expect to be in the beta, you're like at the top of the list. <laughs> That's true. Listen, at this point, I'll, I'll do anything to find some stable internet on the road. <laughs> anything? Would you? Um, what? Well, there's a pretty, pretty big list. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, though, you were on the, the, the computer science board at Tech so, or something like that. Right. And so, because they've got old people on the board and young people on the board. So right, I'm right. one of the young people on the board. And, um, we uh, we were ta- listening to the dean talk to us. And so Al Sacco, you know, the former astronaut, was explaining that his idea related to education is to just cut the cost of education, cut tuition by fifteen percent overnight. Which already we all know that their tuition's awesome. So he was like, let's cut it by fifteen percent, drop every class doing a remote class overnight. He was like, if the rest of the world can do it, why can't we do it? He's like, we'll do online classes. He was like. We'll have certain classes that we intentionally choose to be labs, things online that students will portion of their college career come to tech for. Uh-huh. It was like they can schedule those semesters or seasons and we'll uh-huh. reduce the number of kids on campus and just re- completely rethink what college looks like in higher education. And the department chair for the for computer science was like, why do you think we can do this? And he said, well, it's simple because if we don't, we'll die. He was like, the only entities and organizations that survive post COVID are the ones that don't go back to what they were doing before COVID. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. Adapt or die. That, yeah. Yeah, Scatter, adapt, and and remember. Scatter, adapt, remember. (laughs) We've got the first one down. We've definitely scattered. Yeah. (laughs) It's really, it's funny. And and like this week, this this relates, like this week at the monastery is, is collapse week. And uh, as our, um, as, as our, the guy who's heading up the thing said, it's, it's like shark week, but actually scary. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like listening through this, um, through this podcast um, by a woman whose last name is Ingram. And I wish I remember her first name, but uh, she, she had an essay from a couple of years ago about just the, the enormity of this, uh, looking at the actual data of like the, 
the warming rates and the feedback loops and the methane um, release and just how, how much we're tracking with like the worst case scenarios of the models. And we, we really are way past like so many tipping points. Um, mm -hmm. And then when you, when you really, there's that, there's first like coming in, engaging that. And then the secondary thing is like, it, it's, it's as if someone has given you a terminal diagnosis. Really, like it's the same yeah. sort of psychological response. There's the bargaining, there's the, there's the kind of denial, there's the, you go through the whole the stages of grief. And that we really like actually have to do that as a, as a species, as a culture, in order to, to, to fully like um, live through this, adapt if we can. But mm -hmm. the, the pandemic is kind of like maybe one of the first shocks that has actually gotten us to have to actually feel a lot of this the, the, the enormity of what we're facing, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and, and it sounds to me, at least the people I've been in contact with, like many folks are, are using this as an opportunity to really look at death itself, you know, mm -hmm. to really come to face their own mortality, their own yeah. um, susceptibility to, to sickness and, and, and the separation from people they love and, and the rapid change of the things they expect. And, um, there's there's just been an enormous uptick in, in interest in meditation, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. and in, in like um, uh, programs reconnecting with like native wisdom and um, just all all these. And of course, we saw the protests and everything. It's just sure. it seems to be finally moving a lot of feeling. And uh, I'm at the same time that I'm like realistic about our chances of survival. I I do find a lot of inspiration in just the strength of the human species. I think we're seeing like a lot of the best and in, uh, in people coming out right now. Mm -hmm. um, and y'all are y'all are great examples of it, I'd say, you know. <laughs> that includes this this pot of bad philosophers. <laughs> I, I yeah. Well you know, I, I look we've at always it, been friends. We've Aww. gotten this far through <laughs> collective action. And that's yeah. that's the only thing that gives me hope sometimes is well we got this far. We did it. We, as a society, we've gotten this far, so we can. Gotten this far. We, I know we have the capacity to keep going. Yeah. Um, we have to realize that sometimes. Oh man, chills. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to go soon. It's it's okay. now like yeah, it's late uh, for you. It's it's pretty late. I am you know it's my day. I took a day off so I could I could do this and a bunch of other things. But we go back into noble silence now, and then uh, I wake up. Uh, at four tomorrow morning and for uh, we do meditation and chanting and exercise mm -hmm. and breakfast and then uh, I don't know we got I think we got to put some snow tires on our on our like ATV or something tomorrow <laughs> and we'll, you know that get ready fun. for the winter and, yeah but I'm really just thank you all for making the time and, and yeah, absolutely. going up and uh, on all that it's been really good being with y'all yeah I agree are you in a place where if we end up in the northeast that we could visit absolutely Yes. Um, I, I, I don't know what our COVID policy will be, but we just had, um, I, do either of y'all know Jordan Hall? Is he from, on your radars? He's one of these like sense makers on YouTube yeah. or whatever. He drove his RV up here with his family and, and stayed for a few days. And yeah, we have, we have day guests come and you know, like if you want to see the place, Matt, you just let me know. Y'all are, okay. are welcome to stop by. It might be a little harrowing getting your getting like a <laughs> trailer up our driveway and, and the snow and everything. Uh, well, we, uh, we don't have any plans to head that direction probably until yeah. the earliest next summer. So. I would definitely recommend after the spring, if at all. Yeah. but I'm here for at least a year. So uh, you just let me know when you're coming. And uh, if you cool. want to stop for longer, we do like uh, every month we do a week long uh, meditation retreat and uh, it's kind of a pay what you want model. You know, you just, you, you come and you give what you can. And, um, okay. And it's it's really nice up here. I gotta say, Vermont is 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 pretty. It's it's like it's got seasons yeah, and stuff. So. And it's all, but y'all are <laughs> I bet y'all are seeing a lot of pretty stuff along the way. And you're, you're trying. Yeah, we we actually have fall here in Arkansas, which is yeah. really weird. <laughs> and and Kevin, I really I really like I really, I want to make it to the to the play thing. Like if it's, oh, yeah. if y'all are doing it the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know why we wouldn't. We have okay. literally done it every Friday since. COVID started. Perfect. So. Then, then I'll, I'll try to make it to that one because I'm going, I'm headed back to Austin actually to, to visit. So uh, cool. it would, it would be cool to see you in person if we can make that happen, but well, I will have gone yeah. through airports. So I don't know how you <laughs> feel about that. We can be social distanced and take a walk somewhere. 
uh, whatever. I'll, but, I'll uh, drop the uh, the link in the email chain. And you yeah, can see yeah, it's just... it's literally it's a Zoom link. We mm. we jump on, we pass out roles, we uh, we fun. read a play. It's a lot of fun. And it's just so good to spend time together, even if it's through these this weird little square portal thing. Like, <laughs> it's, still, it's still good. Absolutely. It's it's important. It's really it's, important. It, it's just enriching to me just to see you guys again. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, well, we'll all right. We'll let there. you go. You got to go. You. Continue um, to be a monk. How would how do y'all feel about if if I were to put this on the on the interwebs? Would you would you be would you consent to that? I mean, as soon as you said you were going to record it, I figured you figured it would. Yeah. So <laughs> I know that we probably kind of all went, were in that mode. Um, yeah. yeah. I think free. it would be it'd be a, quite a delight, a treat to to put it up yeah. on. Yeah. In that website. case, I got to plug everything. Uh, yeah. Newsletter twitter.com slash kevsond. I got a YouTube channel that doesn't have a, uh, a vanity <laughs> URL because I've got like thirty six subscribers. <laughs> Uh, but if you search, uh, my most recent video was Muppet Christmas Carol, More Ghosts Than You Think. Um, it involves an actual puppet that I'd made from scratch. Here, actually. Yeah, it's the fuck. He's got <laughs> he just it. stuck his head inside the earth to get the Whoa. puppet. Yeah, here is, the, cord, the, uh, <laughs> the puppet I made out of literal, literal garbage. I, I thought it was going to be a diamond coming from that deep. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's like <laughs> I, I don't have the mouth set up correctly, so I can't make him talk right now. But oh, like, that's right. oh, that is that is a just terrifyingly adorable. Yeah. Oh my, or adorably We're terrifying. We're gonna make a puppet too, so I can make an argument with myself on the internet. Which I don't know. That says a lot about me, probably. It sure does. So you. <laughs> oh my. Oh, lots of love, friends. Yeah. Um, safe okay, travels. I've got all my plugs out now. Anyone who watches this can. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> monasticacademy.org, if anyone's curious yeah. about this thing. <laughs> if, if you want to visit, the, in, the uh, apprenticeship is free, and we can all, always use people here to shovel snow and cook meals and <laughs> meditate a lot. Uh, yeah, come have, come have fun in a monastery. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a blast. Um, Matt, do you have anything you want to plug? You know, I, I don't really have anything pluggable these days. I mean, oh. as always, like Legmar, uh, <laughs> L-E-G-M-A-R is still is still yeah. findable. Like, so if you well, want to see pictures of... Don't go to uh, Matt's Facebook. Matt's Facebook.com. Don't do no, that. No, that, that's, that's going to get you to some landing page. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to see some pictures of the camper, you can check out Legmar anywhere online and see what's going on there. I will definitely, let's, let's do that. I'm, I'm going to put some photos in our email thread and, uh, and you know, just throw in yeah. whatever you got y'all from, from recent times. Um, may yeah. you continue to, to, to weather the, the collapse well and, uh, you know, see y'all when I see y'all. See you around. See you guys. Hey, let me know when you're back in town. See I will. Yeah, Bye. Bye.